Today on Rock the Park... Oh, jeez! If powering over nine mountain peaks and through 100 mile an hour winds isn't hard enough... Don't go up there. Try doing it with your dog. Well, hold on to... Oh, oh, bro! Oh! We're in New Hampshire, about to tackle one of the windiest places on Earth. I think this is it for sure. Right now on Rock the Park. My gosh. I'm Jack Stewart. This is the real deal. And I'm Colton Smith. These are mountains! We've been buddies for years. Always in search of the next adventure. Dude, what was that? We share a passion for our national parks and other wild places around the world. Oh my god. Man. Heading off the beaten path. Pushing our limits and experiencing nature's best kept secrets. Here we go! <laughs> it's how we rock the park. We're looking at this pretty massive tree, and the roots are just popping. Oh, oh there up it goes. And down. Yeah, look at that. Oh my gosh, that yeah. is crazy. When the wind blows so hard that the trees start elevating out of the ground, you know you're in for a rough ride. We're headed into the White Mountains, which is known for having some of the gnarliest terrain and some of the craziest weather in the country. Yeah, we're gonna tackle the Presidential Traverse, a section of the Appalachian Trail and its peaks. They're all above tree line, and you gain and lose about 20,000 feet of elevation in just a couple days' climb. White Mountain National Forest is located in northeastern New Hampshire and a bit of western Maine. The Presidential Traverse is named for America's founding fathers and is known for having the world's worst weather, with hurricane force winds reported year round. Put simply, two jet streams collide over these mountains, and given the numerous slopes and valleys, the wind frequently accelerates. Today, the sun is shining, but the forecast calls for wind. Our goal is to climb Mount Madison, a gain of around 3,500 feet in elevation in just over five and a half miles. All right. And there's one more complication, and his name is Junior. Come here, I know, I know, you're excited, yes. Dogs aren't allowed on the trails in most national parks, but they are allowed on the trails in this national forest. Junior is my dog. He's still kind of a puppy. He's about a year and a half old now. He's made for the outdoors. He loves hiking, loves to be outside, but he's never really tackled something like this. Come here. Everybody needs to be held accountable, so he'll be carrying some of his own supplies. Colton's got a backpack for him. He's got a special harness. He's got a collar that cools him down. He's got a raincoat. He's got booties. He's got this stuff to put on his feet. It's like this dog's got more gear than I do. That's not on, right? <sighs> Come here. We need to get to the top of Mount Madison, the longest continuous climb of the whole traverse, before the wind picks up. Now, I made sure to book a great shelter for us, but that was before I knew Junior would be joining us. I booked us a reservation at one of the alpine huts that are up there. Well, dogs can't stay there. Yes. No problem. I've packed camping gear, and Junior and I will sleep at a tent site near the hut. Backpack is zipped, leash is clipped. How you feeling? Good, good, that's what I thought. You ready? Do it. Let's hike. Oh, what a beautiful day for a walk in the park. In total, we have 20 miles and 9,000 feet of elevation to climb in two days. So we need to keep up a good pace, but Junior has his own schedule. He's already gone to the bathroom and the kind where you gotta squat down and pick up. So I guess you could say this is one of the disadvantages of having a dog with you, is hauling that around. But uh, luckily, we are right next to the trailhead, so I'm actually quite thankful that I can run back and uh, throw this away. Come on. People and their dogs have the same hiking rule. Leave no trace. All right. Pet waste should be buried at least 200 feet from the trail. And if that's not possible, it's got to be carried out. We are surrounded by 50-foot tall hardwood trees that are blocking most of the wind gusts. Wind that could otherwise slow us down. <sighs> Looks like we're hitting the Appalachian Trail. Nice. We'll start heading up in elevation. The Appalachian Trail spans more than 2,200 miles through 14 states. Only about one in four through hikers complete the entire route. Many others don't because of illness, injuries, and even bad weather. 
two hours into our hike, we begin to see why. How is yeah. it? Is it windy? Yeah, 100 plus, dude. We were crawling in some spots. What, what are you guys coming down from? Uh, need death experience? <laughs> All joking aside, these guys say they've come through an absolute gale. More than 100 mile per hour winds up on the top of the mountain. Yeah, I'd be worried about him. He'd probably pick it. He had knocked me down a couple times. Really? Seriously? Yeah. yeah. Knowing what's up there. If you don't have to go up there, I, I wouldn't go up there today. Yeah. That was scary. Once you pass tree line, when, when you try to get to the next cairn up there, you know, then you'll figure it out from there if you want to keep going. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, that'd probably be a good turnaround point if you think you, you know it might be sketchy. It seems like it's even picking up down here right now, too. It sounds like the worst is on the ridge at the top of the mountain. But in the off chance the wind starts to die down, we decide to keep going as long as it feels safe. And by the looks of things further up the trail, we may not be climbing for long. Oh, man, holy cow. OK. Hold on, bud. Hold on, hold on. We're hiking in the White Mountains National Forest in New Hampshire. We got some rocks here. Oh, yeah. Nice and easy. Our plan to summit nine presidential peaks in two days includes an eager but young dog and possible hurricane force winds at the crest of our first peak. Is it windy? Yeah, windy. 100 plus, dude. We were crawling in some spots. Those two guys just raised a major, major red flag for us. The fact that they think the wind might be going over 100 miles an hour up there is incredibly terrifying. Those guys have almost hiked over 2,000 miles, so their words hold a lot of weight. Right now, we've got one plan, and that's to get up to tree line and see how we're feeling. Meanwhile, we're on the lookout for another potential hazard. I'm trying to keep my eyes peeled looking for these moose so we don't spook them. The last thing you want to do is to let a dog run towards a moose because the moose will attack thinking it's a wolf. Suddenly, you have a 1,000-pound moose charging you. That's why keeping dogs on a leash is strongly recommended. The wind is really starting to pick up. You can see the trees start to sway. We're looking at this tree right here, which is pretty massive, and the wind is lifting it out of the ground. So if you look down here, the roots are just popping up, oh, oh, up and down. Yeah, look at that. Oh, oh my gosh, that yeah. is crazy. We're not even above tree line yet, but once we get up there, I have to imagine it's gonna toss us around pretty good too. There's only one thing we can do, and that's to get above tree line and see how it is for ourselves. We basically have just entered the alpine zone. We still have a little bit of brush, but the big trees are gone. And we're met with a familiar warning. Uh, don't go up there. That's what we hear. Yeah, it's terrible. It's uh, winds are gusting. I couldn't walk. At the top of Mount Madison, I had to sit down and scoot. It's crazy. Our plan was to get to Madison Hut today and then continue and do the whole traverse tomorrow. I wouldn't go over the mountain to do it. If there's a back way into Madison, that's how I'd do it. Where does it really start to get bad? <laughs> uh, about the top of that little hill right there. There's a big difference between here and the top of that hill. OK. I just really want to see this for myself. I'll head up to the next Karen. You've got your radio. I, I do. can radio down to you. OK, yeah, we'll see how it is. Because right here, it looks like the trail might be doable. It doesn't look like it's as crazy as this rock pile is here. So I can scout it, Jeez. let you know. Yeah, and we'll make the call. Cool. All right. All right. Be smart, obviously. Of course. All right, so this is definitely the ridge line all the way up to the summit of Mount Madison. The wind seems to be going in spurts. Right now, it's sort of died down. I mean, for now, you should at least come up this far. It's a beautiful view of the ridge line, and we can just take it from here. Copy that. As Junior and I climb, the wind starts to gust even harder. Oh, man, holy cow. OK, yeah, yeah. I think this is it for sure. I do too. Because I mean, if you look, it just gets worse and worse up there. That's a bummer, man. I thought for sure we'd get to the hunt. I did too. Whoa, whoa, jeez Louise. My gosh. The one thing that we've learned time and time again is that nature doesn't go by your schedule. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's the fact of the matter. We'll come up with something. Jeez. 
Yeah, let's All go. Right. Yeah. Let's do it, buddy. Come on. Today's setback creates a whole new plan and a whole new hazard tomorrow. Okay, good. Hold on, buddy. Hold on to him. Oh, whoa, bro. Oh, whoa. <sighs> We're in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. Yesterday, dangerous winds stopped us from summoning Mount Madison and blew away our chances of summoning all nine peaks on this trip. I'm not gonna lie, my legs are incredibly sore today. We've got heavy winds again. I think at this point, summoning all of them, that's gonna be very, very difficult. Today, the forecast calls for heavy winds and a chance of thunderstorms. Sometimes a good plan is all about the part you can salvage. So rather than start over at Madison, we're heading straight for Mount Washington, the highest peak in New Hampshire. Yesterday, we had to hike all the way up just to see what the conditions are. You can drive to the summit of Mount Washington. Mm -hmm. The weather holds out. We start at Washington, we go to the next peak, the next peak, the next peak, the next peak. In fact, if we can power through to Mount Pierce, we'll summit five peaks in one day. Once we drive up there, all we're gonna have to do is step out of the car and we'll know if it's gonna be doable or not. You look around you right now and what a beautiful day. Oh, it's 77 degrees, the sun's out. But we spoke too soon. As we make our way up Mount Washington, waves of fog start rolling in and the wind picks up. Oh man. Wow. It's a bit windy. Jeez Louise. So yeah, right now we still are 2,000 feet away from the summit. The wind's whipping right now. You can feel it push you forward, move you backwards. It'll be interesting up top. Man, oh man. Oh man, now we are in the clouds and they're also quite dark. <laughs> you can definitely see that the visibility is extremely low. 100 feet might be a little generous. Yeah, I'd say it's more like 30 or 20 feet. That's gonna be a problem on our hike. Ooh. The wind's definitely blowing. It doesn't seem like it's horrible, but there's almost zero visibility up here. I mean, it's maybe 20, 30 feet. Luckily, our first summit is only a few feet away. We have no view, but we still have a sense of humor. All right. Well, we hit our first summit in about 50 feet. Yeah, that, that wasn't too hard either. This is great. We're on the summit of Mount Washington, the tallest peak in the range and the second tallest in the eastern United States. And the windiest. Yeah, right up here. The windiest moment ever recorded was set. It was over 230 miles per hour. I mean, we're feeling the wind right now. That's nothing compared to that. On a clear day, we'd be able to see five states from this peak. Today, nothing. We set out, and while the visibility clears up a bit, the wind does not. He's falling right behind you. <laughs> okay. And a misstep by Junior clinches it for us. Hold on, buddy. Hold on to him. Oh, whoa, bro. Oh, whoa. whoa. Junior is fine, but the wind is picking up. So for the second time in two days, we're forced to call it quits. It's morning, day three. We hadn't planned on staying in New Hampshire this long, but we're not about to leave before seeing at least some of the presidential peaks. We've wisely decided to give Junior the day off. Still roaring. Yeah, it is. Man, oh man. It was a good idea not bringing Junior up here. I mean, he's safe with our buddy. Starting off today, the winds are still pretty high. I mean, we're probably dealing with 40 miles an hour. Maybe we'll get up to 50 today. Oh yeah, that's something that we would have a hard time braving, let alone a 40 pound dog. The first day, we had insane winds. Then yesterday, we had insane winds coupled with dense, dense fog. So today, we've got a little wind, no fog. We should be good to go. Third time's a charm, right? We are going to summit at least a few of these peaks of the Presidential Traverse. <laughs> All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> One. Yes. It only took us 20 feet of climbing. <laughs> Woo! But it's one nonetheless. You know, it's a rare thing when the tallest and gnarliest mountain in the range is the easiest to get to. I know. <laughs> now, on that note, let's start making our way down because we still have a lot of peaks to bang. Finally, we see the incredible view we missed yesterday. We're heading for Mount Monroe, which is about a two-mile hike on the oldest continuous footpath in the country. 
on our way, we can't help but check out the type of shelter we were supposed to stay at on our first night. The term hut is a little misleading, you know? It's a house, it's a big house. <laughs> Lake of the Clouds Hut was built as an emergency shelter. These days, all the huts are popular spots for hikers to get a hot drink or just to get out of the wind. This thing's great. Yeah, it is. It's nice to have if you're ever hiking in this area, like just in case, if I find myself in the middle of a windstorm. Yeah, it's super cool. All right, why don't we hydrate a bit, get a little snack, yeah. and then make our way up Monroe. Yeah. Most people hike the Traverse the way we are, from north to south. From here, we are descending and then climbing again to reach Mount Monroe at almost 5,400 feet. Now from here, it looks like we've got a little bit of a hike to get there, and then we're gonna work our way up that ridge and maybe have a tiny bit of a scramble once we get up there. From here, you can see what makes the Presidential Traverse so much fun and such a good challenge. It's up and down and up and down, and the elevation gain and loss is pretty extreme. This is it. All right. Woo! And summit number two. OK. Two. Two. <laughs> two down. Oh, the view up here is spectacular. So this is peak number two of five, and Franklin is right there. The clock is ticking, though. I think we got to keep moving. I think you are right. All right, let's make some mileage. Is it too much to hope that the weather holds out? Oh, I see our summit. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. One final push. We were on the Presidential Traverse in the White Mountains, where rough winds forced us to abandon our plan to summit all nine peaks. But we're halfway to our new goal, cresting five peaks in one day. Oh, I see our summit. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. One final push. <sighs> all right. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is the summit of Mount Franklin, so. Another one down, and we really didn't have to work too hard for this guy. And that is peak number three for the day. We got three down and two to go. So from here on Mount Franklin, we can see how much elevation we have lost coming down off of Mount Washington. I mean, it is just towering above us, and so is Monroe. This is the kind of day that you hope for. After the last two days we've had, this is a nice change of pace. In total, hikers gain and lose around 20,000 feet of elevation on the Presidential Traverse. But as we learned, the hardest part is always the unpredictable weather. That's a Karen right there. Oh, yeah, it is. That's a summit, Karen. Yes, it is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Yeah. Number four. Peak four. We're on top of Eisenhower. The wind is whipping, but you know what? We're starting our steady decline down into the woods with one last summit to go. Mount Pierce, and then we will have tackled most of the Presidential Traverse. Let's hit it. As we descend, we start to feel warmer, and that's because we're out of the Alpine zone. So we've definitely popped down under tree line again. Things are really starting to change. We're so close. Pierce is right ahead. Oh, man, is this it? <laughs> this I think is this it. is it. Wow. In the trees. Who would have thought? Hidden. Touch it. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Number five. Number five. Woo! Man. We got over half of the presidential traverse. It's not what we set out to do, but hey, we did the best we could. We persisted, we waited for that window, and we accomplished part of it. And that's something. And Honestly, today was just a great day of hiking. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. All these peaks were different. I mean, you've got Washington, which is just a beast. Monroe, it's rocky, jagged, sharp. Then you've got Franklin, the plateau, Eisenhower, this big, big climb to then come over the hill. And now we're in treeline again yeah. on piers. <laughs> There's something for everybody up here. Speaking of everybody, we should start making tracks. Go see the pup. <laughs> I want to go see the pup. It's been a whole day. Yeah, I'm sure he's caught on that we've gone hiking this time. <sighs> he's not going to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't accomplish all of our goals, but by adjusting to the weather and the challenges, we had a great time and learned some valuable lessons about nature. Hey, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park. 
my gosh. He's not exactly used to the boots. All right, come on, just try them on for size. Come on, come buddy. On. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You just walk normal, it's okay. It's, okay. it's all right, dude. It's okay. It's, just it's okay. He already lost two of them. <laughs> Whoa. Get in, buddy. Ah.